Hi guys, it's NDP here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create some sparks inside of HitFilm Express. Once again, the AC effect will be using the Particle Simulator, which is an add-on pack. At the moment there is a January sale, 25% off everything. Okay, let's get on with making it. So what you want to do is create a new composite shot. Now you want to have this at something like 5 seconds. This is just how long I'm doing it. This can be however long you really want to have it. I'm going to name this Sparks. You can name it whatever you want. Then set your uh, template to what it should be on default and then just press OK. So now you've got a new composite shot as you can see and you've got an empty timeline and your media tab. You want to go up to the effects tab and search for particle simulator. Now you can just drag and drop that into your timeline and then as you can see you have a dot that's creating more particles. Now what we want to do is go into the controls, go into the emitters properties and now open up into the uh, emitters property again and then as you can see you've got trajectory just there and it says random but change that over to being cone. Now you want to change the rotation Z to being 90 degrees not 91, 90. As you can see that now points straight down. Then you can change the radius, but we'll get into that in a minute. So now if you open up the particle systems again, then you'll notice there's one called appearance. If you open that up and then go into texture source, change it to built in, and then if you change this over to being sparks streak, as you can see you've now just got a bunch of lines. Now if you press a line to motion, take that box, you now sort of have these lines shooting out in all forms of strange directions. Now you want to do is search in the top of your controls bar for scale. And then you've got this movement property just here. You want to change this to 10. As you can see you have now got smaller sparks. Uh, so they're not as big and strange. They look more like sparks which is what we're going for. So now at the moment you've just got a constant trail of sparks falling down. which might be okay for some things, but for this project you just want to have a burst of sparks. So now what we're going to do is go into the general for the particle system, again still inside of the emitter, and you want to click on particles per second. And if you want a really short burst you can go in a couple of frames and then just tick or click the circle here so it goes blue, and then move ahead another couple of frames and then set it to zero. So as you can see you've then just got this tiny burst of sparks that just fire out of that one point that you have created. However, if you want to have a longer burst of sparks, all you have to do, it's quite simple actually, is just drag along on these two keyframes. You can move them and then ex change the difference between them. By the way, to get up like this timeline thing, you press press it and it displays timeline and then you can just use, move that. So now you've got a slightly longer burst of sparks. However, you might notice that they sort of shoot out in quite a large radius and that's, as I said, that's why we'll be revisiting the radius property inside of trajectory. At the moment it's 22.5, you might want to change this to something like 15 just to close it up or 10 but you don't want to move all the way down just to have a line because I mean that might work for some things but not for this. I'm going to settle with 15. However you might notice that the sparks disappear quite quickly. You might want to open up the controls and now search for life. Now as you can see there's the movement scale for life. If you change this to something around 3 seconds as you can see they last a lot longer. Of course you can uh, totally customise this however you want, so two works quite well. However, also you might notice that they're just white. You might want to change that, so if you click on the particle system, now if you go up into the lifetime controls, that should have appeared on your tab. Just locate that, and now you can see there's one called colour. Now you want to change this to a gradient. So you've got one point at the moment, and that's just keeping the box white. But then you want to click just below the 
timeline, double click on the s small box, and then change this to being a brighter sort of orangey colour. And now the first point, you want to change this to something that lo looks really warm, because then you almost have, it starts off really hot, and then it cools down. You might have also noticed that they just suddenly disappear. So something I've been trying is this alpha control as well. If you also change this to gradient and you just move the black point along to the end. So as you can see it now sort of fades out. You can move around these points to change how this effect works. You can also have the scale property in a gradient and set this down a bit. So that they start off slightly bigger then get smaller and fade out. So now you've created your small burst of sparks you might be thinking well why would I want to use this? That's where I'm going to be doing a quick bit of compositing. So I just found on the internet this corridor image. I'm just going to scale this up and it's like an old rusty um, corridor. So now I'm going to move my particles by going into controls as you can see there's the emitter if you then press on shape you've got these position controls. What you want to make sure that's happening is when you're moving this red arrow those position controls are moving and not the transform ones because otherwise you'll be moving the entire particle simulator which isn't what you want. So make sure you run the shape for that burst of particles and now you can just move them somewhere inside of this image. And this small white dot point that is where the particles will be starting off from. So as you can see there's the burst of particles falling down, or sparks falling down from the ceiling. If you want to have more than just one spark come out you can then duplicate the emitter and then as you can see you've now got two and then you want to go into the shape, press on shape again and now move that. So I'm just going to move this over to this control panel just here. However, if you want them to start at a different point, so it's not just sort of particles all fall at the same time, um, then open up the second emitter properties, go into the particle systems, go into general, and then you've got your particles per second controls. Um, create one just before that and set it to zero meaning that the particles aren't falling here, but then they'll start falling. Then if you want to just move this along to somewhere else in the timeline, just highlight them all and then drag them across. You can also change up the speed of these just by moving these points around. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you found it useful. If so, please leave a like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. Goodbye.